we really were looking forward to going to uh, to downpour and um, almost almost at the last moment Connie just couldn't go she had other commitments uh, of course work commitments and she just wasn't able to make it and the unusual thing is I instantly thought of Mike I mean I know Mike quite well he's in our small group we work out together um, but he'd never given me any indication that he was at all interested in going and uh, he is always busy. It is unusual for him to have time on a weekend to, to be able to do such a thing as that. And I look back on it now, and that's where it seems clear that God was at work, because he was the guy. There was just no question. He was the guy that was supposed to go to downpour. Um, I think it was on the Wednesday night, Rod Bray called me up and said he had an extra ticket. Would I like to go? Um, I said yes, but I have to talk, talk to Cherise. Um, I, we discussed it. It was pretty much a clear no. <laughs> but uh, I decided that I was going to go Friday night anyways because it was after the girls were in bed and it was only one evening. Um, so I called Rod back and I said, I'll go, but just for Friday. Uh, I can't go Saturday because it's just too much time away. Friday came. Rod picked me up as soon as work was over, so I didn't even get to eat supper with the family or even put the girls to bed. Um, we went down to Hamilton. I went down with Rod and, and Steve Gridonis. Uh, it was starting to pack out. It was kind of neat to see how many people were actually showing up uh, to an event like this. Um, and I was still really sort of in the mindset of, are they really good enough to join us uh, or, or to have us join them? Uh, is their music good enough because we have excellent musicians and and our, our audio gear and all of our technical so stuff is is done top notch and I didn't think they would be up to it um, even though they were 50 times larger than us. So it started out they impressed me right away the the music was was awesome uh, the worship was amazing the teaching was unbelievable um, and it, being immersed with that many people and hearing the message that was being taught uh, just really started to hit home. After going through um, being immersed in that uh, Friday night and having it start to hit home and say, hey, listen up here because uh, you need to pay attention. Um, and just being immersed with that many Christians and and people hungry for the word, it was, it was convicting. Um, and then at the, at the end of the night, they had an altar call um, where I can't even remember how many people, the whole front of the, uh, of the stage was just packed with people um, giving their lives over to Christ for the first time. And then after that was full, then there was no more room left. It was piling up down the aisles. Then they called out, okay, people that want to give their life back to Christ. And it liter literally filled the aisles all the way to the top of the stadium. It was an amazing sight. And uh, I know I was feeling the urge to go, but by the time it uh, really started to set in, by that point, everything was full, and they um, just told us, okay, they realized that you couldn't move, you couldn't come forward, and they said, just kneel where you are, and I know, I know I went down, and as did Rod beside me and numerous other people that were from our church that had gone. After that night, I had realized that I needed more because that wasn't enough. On the car ride home, I had decided and I told Rod, I need to go back tomorrow. I need to, I need to go back. And, uh, and he agreed. I said, I need to go tomorrow, and he just said, yes, you do. <laughs> it was...
He surprised me with that response. I was thinking that he was only going for the Friday night, which wasn't as bad as all day Saturday. So he came home that night. I had waited up and just came in the door. He said, oh, I'm going tomorrow. So when I came home, it was late. I think it was 1130. Um, I came home and I just said, I'm sorry, but I have to go tomorrow. And nothing else was said. So that was a cold night. So I got up early the next morning. Rod picked me up. And uh, I had gone in and out a couple of times because uh, I went out to wait and then realized I forgot my Bible. I had to go back in. I went back out again. And uh, with the doors opening and closing, I made sure he's just a little bit more upset because uh, waking her up at 6 o'clock in the morning wasn't good, especially on a Saturday by herself. Um, <clears throat> so we went down. Again, this time it was just me and Rod. And uh, we had a chance to talk on the way down just a little bit. Uh, I was still holding back. And uh, once we got there, it was just another full day, an amazing day filled with awesome worship with thousands of people. It's, I've, I've never been a part of anything like that. I've been to events like that, but I've never been a part myself of events like that where I've, I'm actually involved. And that made a world of difference. Uh, the preaching again, the teaching was amazing. Uh, not one word was wasted. Not from any of the speakers. They all, uh, every word they spoke was, was guided by God. It was uh, very impactful. So at the end of it, we came back home uh, Saturday night. Um, I thought this was an amazing weekend, and wow, there, you know, I need to change and um, fast. <laughs> and uh, I thought, okay, this is a lot to deal with, and you know, this is going to be hard, but okay, we can get through it. And, and then I came back, and Saturday night was another cold night. <laughs> Sunday morning was tough. Uh, getting up, getting all the girls ready, and going to church. And, you know, it was, again, just very cold between the two of us. Uh, not much said. We hadn't been speaking for probably four or five days at this point and because I just don't talk when I get mad I just don't I don't want to fight in front of the kids so I don't say anything Mike went into our bedroom to paint the trim I went in and followed him because I knew he needed to talk and we fought I don't even remember what about but I remember being so glad and like at least we're talking in his mind it was awful it was the worst fight we'd ever had but I'm thinking oh at least, you know, I told him what I feel, and that has to be better than not saying anything. Um, on the way home from that Sunday, in the car, I felt like I needed to offer to babysit for Mike and Therese. So I told my dad, and he asked me if they offered, and I said no, like if they asked me to, and I said no, but I just still need to call an offer to do it. He's like, well, if they want you to babysit, then they'll call you. And I kept on going on with him for a while about that. And then finally he just said, whatever, do what you want. And so when we got home, I felt really weird to call because I was pretty sure that they wouldn't need me, but I still felt like I needed to. So when I called, they actually did need me, and I was pretty excited. And then they called back a couple minutes later and canceled. They said Sharice wasn't feeling good or something. I had decided at that point, no, we weren't going because uh, it was just not a good day. And so I told her no.